right. Okay, it's John Reed. I'm at the ASUG Annual Conference 2018 with Jeff Scott. And Sapphire CEO now, ASUG. John. Oh, and Sapphire now. Aren't, aren't you impressed, though, I led with ASUG? I'd love that you led with the ASUG yeah. Annual Conference. Yeah, because a lot of users are here to get educated. There are a so. lot of users here, and you know the numbers this year are, are stronger than they've been even the prior year, and Bill talked about that yesterday. And uh, this year, we did something interesting, talk about digital transformation. All of the badges have a little chip on the back of them, so we're able to heat map. And uh, there was a little talk yesterday when, when, when Bill uh, and Rob, uh, and especially Alex, talked about creep. And there certainly could be an argument that some of this gets a little creepy, right? Yeah, don't be a creep was I'm the not, message, I think. I, yeah. Don't be a creep. And I'm, yeah. we're not going to be a creep. But what's interesting is that we can see now where are the sessions and where the interest is, which mm -hmm. was almost impossible for us to do before. So we can mm -hmm. look now and say, you know, these amount of people are – in these sessions, doing these things or looking at this type of data. And I can't tell you today because I don't have it all yeah. on the top of my head which ones they are. But literally moments ago before I walked across uh, to, to chat with you, the team was showing me real-time analytics. And, you know, we've already well surpassed our metrics of last year on how many people are in sessions, what sessions they're in, where they're going, how long they're staying. And right. that data, you know, for us from a community perspective really helps to drive home how do we program this event sure. to really bring the right education to the customers at the right time. And for those who weren't able to make it down to the wonderful climbs of Orlando in June. Oh, it's what, been humid, my friend. <laughs> so yeah, humid. It, it has been humid. What 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 is your what is ASUG's message to customers, whether they're members of ASUG or, or not? The kinds of things you talked about in your keynote. What are you trying to get across right now to SAP? I think the important thing is that this technology is ours, right? I mean, SAP does an amazing job of telling us about technology and what they think the trends are and where they think this is going. But my perspective is, and we had four amazing athletes on the stage yesterday. We had Lindsey Vaughn. Uh, we had the Lamoureux twins who won gold in, in women's hockey. Uh, and we had um, Amy Purdy, who is a both an Olympic and Paralympic athlete. And they had amazing stories. But what I talked about was the analogy that – you know, using the, the idea of skiing is that, you know, SAP's technology is the latest pair of skis. It requires us, our skill, our determination, our grit as customers to make this technology work for us. And so what my, you know, um, advice and, and what I really feel very passionately about is that this is amazing technology from SAP. We as customers have a commitment and a duty to take this and put it to work. I mean, SAP, you know, will will make great tech, but it's up to us and our customers and how we think about our customers and we think about our stakeholders and our shareholders. How do we take this information, this data, this tech and put it to work? Um, and that's not easy. Um, in many ways, John, I think that the technology landscapes that we operate under today are more complex than they've ever been. The mm -hmm. um, the consumerization of technology, which is a couple year old world word, right, is is driving us through behaviors where people can buy things at any time of day or night. And so, the technology that supports all this is far more complex. Our back end systems that have to deal with all that are more complex. Right. The choices we make, the people involved in the buying cycles. You know, it used to be that IT would buy most technology in the organizations. We all recognize that's not the case anymore, that that technology may be bought by a line of business people, and they have a yeah. much greater say in how they use it. And I think a lot of the conversations yesterday and what SAP talked about regarding, you know, um, C4 HANA is really a reflection of that, that we have to be as a community much more reflective of the needs of not only the IT professional, but the marketing professional, the sales professional, line of business folks, uh, plant floor, manufacturing, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And so the other key message that I really brought out of the, you know, the ASA keynote yesterday, it's, it takes all of us. And I don't think this is, this should be long term. And SAP and ASUG are talking about this in a lot of detail. This is not a long-term conference that just speaks to IT professionals. And if you think about it historically, that's been what it is. We have to bring the line of business folks here as well. And that's right. a commitment we've made amongst ourselves and each other that you know over time, we're going to make a conference that those people find a huge value in as, as well as us. SAP has been talking a lot this year about the so-called intelligent enterprise. I remember subscribing to Intelligent Enterprise Magazine in 1998. <laughs> uh, and, and did that I've, existed? It did. It, there, it did. And I've referred to it as kind of the holy grail, right? That, that in a sense, like that's, I understand what SAP is talking about that, I think. But a lot of it is about imbuing existing products with a deeper level of user friendliness, a deeper level of automation, um, a, a deeper level of what SAP would consider customer 
facing stuff, which is what C4 HANA is about. Do you think that vision resonates with customers? What kinds of feedback have you gotten on these things? I think that vision always resonates with customers and they hear that and they nod their heads and they agree with it. I think the challenge is we're not always super clear about how to execute that mm. and how to make those new visions fit within the framework of everything we're already doing. Mm. So to me, I think that all of that gets a lot of head nods and a lot of, yep, got it, understand it, not exactly sure what to do with it right now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I think I would encourage SAP to be a little bit more purposeful and thoughtful. And as it rolls these messages out, to understand that it takes this community a lot longer to adopt these things than we mm -hmm. give everyone credit for. Right. And again, back to our conversation a few moments ago, um, our technology landscapes are complex and the customers that are here operate SAP because they operate in very complex environments. They are complex organizations. They offer right. a lot of products. They, they operate globally. And yep. if, you, if you had a simple enterprise, right. you wouldn't probably be running SAP. No, you have a is, complex enterprise, which is why we always dance around this run simple tagline. Like, what does yeah, that mean? Exactly? What does that mean? You know, yeah. and you and I've had a lot of, you know, yeah. back and forth on this as we've got somewhat to know snarky back and forth. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> sometimes very snarky. Um, but again, so these these organizations are, are yeah. complex and these bringing this this tech into them is not just an overnight thing. You don't just, you know, go wake up on Friday mm -hmm. morning after you get home from this event and go, hey, I'm going to put this in over the weekend and just throw a couple switches and I'm going to light it up and it'll be perfect, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, these things take time to go through. And I think SAP is saying all the right things. My ask back is, can you please allow the organizations to absorb a little bit better? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, John, you know, when you have a sponge, right? And that mm -hmm. sponge is already full and the water just rolls right off the sponge instead of being yeah. absorbed. And I think a lot of us operate under under data overload and want to make sure we understand how to fit all these things in. The the idea of intelligent enterprise is absolutely positively, you know, on point. Um, mm -hmm. I love the concept of C4 HANA. Right. Um, and I think where we have to have better um, alignment as the user community with SAP is these concepts get walked out at 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 you know shows like this, but there mm -hmm. isn't any underpinning um, support for that. So as an example, um, the ASUG portion of this event where we will run over 500 sessions over these three days, there is no sessions on C4 HANA. Right. Um, and there should be. I mean, I think this is a this is an area where I want to do better with SAP. And it's, you know, of, of being able to align with them. So when we have these conversations, we're ready to bring this and carry it back into you know, the rest of this event. Now, I think they're doing some stuff with that on the show floor, and we need to do a better job of reflecting it back and forth. Um, mm. it, intelligent enterprise, exactly the same challenge. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, one other piece that came up, it came up during my discussions with um, with, with Sugan yesterday, uh, one of their big priorities. Is, Sugan? Which, yeah. The, so the, the, the Global User yes. Group Consortium. Yes. Yeah, the one, the, one that, yes. the one that you know kind of gets all of us together and we yes. chat about stuff. That would be those guys. Because yeah, yeah. not everyone knows what that is. Thank you for defining that because they might have thought it was a toothpaste or something. They could it have. Or, a little or bit like a, a medical toothpaste. Or an interplanetary yeah. <laughs> exploration mission. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, one of their key points, which I think ties in with what you're saying, is that a lot of these customers need help transitioning to the new tech and they need a lot more help with business case, which is a classic thing we've talked yep. about. The The two things that Hasa mentioned today, which I thought were important, he acknowledged in this sort of vision that a couple of the challenges for customers. One is heavily over-customized instances of SAP, which we know a lot about. And he had some pretty yep. good answers for like going forward some of the solutions to that. But the other thing that he Seb was, we need to do better with integration. And he made a very strong vow that it would be better in the future with integration. And I thought that was very interesting because he's talking to customers who have been through this before with NetWeaver, if you'll recall, where yep. Net, NetWeaver was once hailed as sort of this, this middleware that was going to solve all these problems. Um, so when you hear Hasso say that, do, what do customers think? Is he talking the right talk? And is SAP going to earn credibility around this? And how so will they do it? I think Hasso is saying exactly the right thing. Uh, SAP's foundational strength has always been its ability to be integrated into other things. And what I hear from a large percentage of the customer base 
is as the acquisitions have been made, the integration of those solutions back into a greater whole has not been as clean or effective as it could be. Mm. And many customers are left to scratching their heads trying to determine how do I integrate this new SAP product X into my ERP? And those roadmaps are not clear. And then what happens is you have to bring in outside expertise to make that happen. Mm. And then that starts to drive up the cost of integrating these solutions. And before you know it, you have, you know, very expensive projects that really should be driven, you know, and be out of the box type of things that are not. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the customer base comes from. So I, I think that Hasso is spot on. Uh, these products need to be integrated better and mm -hmm. they need to be able to be done in such a way that customers don't have to spend small fortunes to do what they think should be delivered out of the box. I think that's one we're going to have to revisit in a year or two and see how this vow translates into action because you look at it's getting more intense now with all the cloud products right because these aren't part of an integrated ecc correct suite, so and and you know back to your point just a few minutes ago how does c4 hana and intelligent enterprise figure into that right are those standalone products how do those integrate how do we connect right. them not only to our core erp but how do we connect them to concur, concur or reba field glass you know um success factors, hybris, and so forth. And a big one, how do you get started? You know, do customers ask you this? Like all this stuff, all these technologies, all these options, like, or are they pretty clear on, hey, I have a pain point, I know what I need to do about it? No, I, I think customers um, feel that they know exactly where their pain points are. Mm -hmm. How they resolve that pain or, or abate that pain with, with SAP is, is a very big puzzle. Yeah. And I, I think that becomes, you know, an issue, right? That we, you know, when you look at, um, you know, the, the, the breadth and depth of the product line, you mm -hmm. know, you can achieve a lot of things using a lot of different SAP products. Mm -hmm. Wh which one should you pick? Mm -hmm. Right. And which mm -hmm. one are you really going to want to ri ride? Which horse do you ride for the short term or the long term? And I mm -hmm. don't think those roadmaps are particularly clear. Now, they're mm -hmm. clear in the sense of I'm, I'm on XYZ product and here's where that product is going in the next mm -hmm. two or three years. I think there's a lot of really good work that's been done there. Yeah. But, hey, I, I need to your point, I need to buy. Um, I need to buy, uh, you know, this kind of capability. I need I need, you know, field marketing. Which piece do I use? Right. I don't know. I've done something of a checklist in the past for what I consider healthy SAP or ERP projects. And there's a bunch of different factors, but a lot of it has to do with more network customers that are more connected to user groups uh, that are more able to bring in independent auditors and consultants as opposed to relying on one tier one vendor, for yep. example. You see a lot of customers in various stages of success or struggle. Have you seen things like this emerge as common criteria? I would assume that the user group involvement obviously is a big one as far as getting educated and informed. Are there other things like that or is that sort of the key? Or I think that there is a lot to be said for getting these projects done in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, I, it's a great question, John, because the other day I was speaking to uh, an individual who was talking about a cloud product. And, you know, they were talking about some challenges they're having with the cloud. And, you know, we, we have this sense as customers that, oh, go put everything in the cloud and all the problems that we have experienced as legacy customers instantly go away. Mm -hmm. They don't. No. Those same integration challenges, those same um, implementation challenges are still there. Right. They're now done in the cloud, in this mystical cloud thing. Yeah. And so we still come up with, you know, what I've always called the uh, Monday morning surprise where right. you as a, as a technology professional go, hey, I'm going to put this feature in over the weekend. You don't really tell anyone about it. And then everyone arrives at work on Monday morning ready to get their work done. They're, they're already behind. Mm -hmm. And they're like, uh, what happened? And mm -hmm. a, a function that worked this way on a Friday is now not working and no one told me it was different. That, that problem hasn't gone away. It's just moved to the cloud. Yep. Yep. And now you that problem, resolving that problem, is sitting behind a whole bunch of help desks that you don't control. So you right. can't call, you know, Sally in IT right. on Monday morning and say, what happened? And yeah. Sally says, where's my throat yeah, to choke? Yeah, 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 where's my throat to choke? And yeah. Sally says, I'm so sorry, yeah. we're gonna roll that back out. Instead, right. you call 1-800-HELP-DESK, yep. and someone says, oh, we'll get back to you. Yep, yep, yep. In 
in and how long i don't know the answer to that yeah yeah well um, we're getting the go signal because you and i have vip meetings to attend believe it or not that are more important than this one but um one a couple of quick things i just want to say is you guys have made some editorial changes brought in some new talent which i've had a chance to work with and part of that has been a commitment to more public and transparent airing of certain issues so i treat this podcast <laughs> as part of that it and is i look forward to more of the same I'm interested to see what else you do in the public domain. You did more with licensing recently, so we're not going to talk about. Yeah. By the way, folks, we made an intentional decision there. We have other content on that for other times. Yeah, please please send your hate mail today. to John Reed. Yep. If you um, have a complaint about the fact that we didn't cover that, just let me know. But I'll be writing about that shortly So on Diginomica, so no worries there. Any final thought before we wrap? No, John, always great to talk okay. to you, and Thanks. these are always great conversations, cool. and hopefully this helps the community.